Donkey Kong Country, a necessity for gracious living. Why does this never work? The Donkey Kong Country trilogy for the Super Nintendo is often celebrated as some of the most beautiful 16-bit platforming games ever produced. These Nintendo exclusives, developed by British studio Rare, would completely reinvent the entire Donkey Kong franchise, offering a visually stunning experience that featured pre-rendered graphics achieved through an innovative compression technique that converted 3D models into Super Nintendo sprites. The first Donkey Kong Country game released in November of 1994 would demonstrate that Nintendo's aged hardware could still deliver impressive visual experiences. You didn't need an expensive Sega CD add-on to play that generation's arguably best-looking games. It seems in this case that Genesis doesn't what Nintendo do, but only for a matter of time. As with many examples we have looked at on this channel, it wouldn't be long until Donkey Kong Country was available to play on Sega 16-bit hardware too. Well, kind of, anyway. So bearing these riveting thoughts in mind... I am Lady Decade, and this is the illegal Donkey Kong Country for the Sega Genesis. During the 90s, while we often associate certain video game characters with particular brands, interestingly, for grey markets worldwide, bizarre unlicensed conversions of games would usually be produced so that you could enjoy interpretations of classic titles, but on the wrong hardware. We have analysed many juicy examples like Super Mario World, Street Fighter 2 and The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, all produced for the NES. We have looked at illegal Super Mario World and Mario All-Stars-like games on the Sega Genesis side. Something that all of the examples I have just mentioned have in common is that these bootlegs were all produced in Asia, usually in the either so-called People's Republic Republic of China or Taiwan, aka the Republic of China. Rather impressively, while Donkey Kong Country had previously shown off what the Super Nintendo was capable of at its full potential, game developers from this grey region would show that a game equally as stunning could be reproduced, but for the Sega Mega Drive. Tubular dude. Known as Super Donkey Kong 99, as one would expect, this oddity was produced in 1999, thus meaning if the millennium wasn't a significant enough reason to party, then maybe Donkey Kong Country for the Mega Drive was. As you can see, visually at least, the bootlegs seem to have performed a fantastic job of taking the graphics and enemy sprites from the original Donkey Kong Country games and successfully supplanting them in this dubious Genesis entry. I mean, look at this thing. It, it looks like an official Donkey Kong Country demonstrating that the excellent graphics featured in the SNES classics were just as possible on the Genesis. So Genesis does, what Nintendo? If you purchased this game back in the day though, not everything would have been coming up Millhouse. While on the surface it may look like a Donkey Kong Country game, the reality is that gameplay and experience wise, this one offers something entirely different and not for the better either. Let's start by referencing this one's controls, one of the most important factors when finding enjoyment and comfort from any game. In Super Donkey Kong 99's case, control-wise, the title is designed around the Mega Drive's three-button controller, which would result in certain moves that are executable in the original games being entirely omitted from this one. Speaking of moves, thank you so much to those who have recently hit the like and subscribe buttons. For every new subscriber and like that I get, YouTube has pushed my content out there to newer audiences and for that, I will always be thankful because I literally couldn't do it 
without your generous support. So if you want more illegal videos, subscribe now so that I can finally hit that 100k subscriber mark, which will bring me one step closer to finally getting my hands on the crystal coconut. Oh yes, it will be mine. <laughs> Players can run with the B button, jump with the C button, and use the A button to throw barrels at enemies. But if you want to pull off a roll attack, I am afraid you can't do that this time. Cutbacks to the classic mechanics do not simply end there though. Suppose you fancy running while holding onto a barrel. In that case, you won't be able to do that either. And don't even think about taking a hit, as just one touch from an enemy results in an insta-death for our favourite banana-devouring primate. This problem is partially caused by the fact that the original Super Nintendo games feature DK barrels, which are laced throughout the stages. These can be broken to free a partner from within, with the first game introducing Diddy Kong, the second Dixie Kong, and the third Kiddy Kong. Unfortunately, with a lack of DK barrels in the Mega Drive game, no other characters are playable except for Donkey Kong himself. If he takes a hit, there is no opportunity to take control of his furry friends to progress when he is out for the count. How annoying! In an interesting twist though, assets, sprites and scenery have not solely been taken from the original Donkey Kong Country game, but also its sequel and threequel, resulting in this bootleg aesthetically being a sort of mashup of the three. Players must side-scroll through five different worlds containing two stages with matching themes. For seasoned Donkey Kong Country connoisseurs, these will all look familiar. For example, the first is based on the docks from Donkey Kong Country 3, the second is based on the mills from the same game, and the final three were created to look like the factory, ruins and ice areas which could all be found in the original Donkey Kong Country game. While this game is much shorter than any of the Source games that this one is based on, one cool feature of this game is that it does have boss fights at the end of each world. These include the likes of Queen Bee, Master Neki and Naughty. But like much of the game, the fights contain flaws, making it all the more apparent that this is a bootleg. For example, the fight of Queen Bee can appear tough, as the room to move under her with a barrel seems incredibly small. Unfortunately, or indeed fortunately though, she flies straight through any barrel Donkey Kong is holding and therefore is nowhere near as tough to beat as she looks. Naughty's fight features a hilarious quirk that Donkey Kong is faced with his dying animation as you defeat them. The fight against the giant Neki can be even more problematic due to a glitch causing it to become invincible when playing the game using certain emulators. Even the final showdown with King K. Rule is botched as hell because a programming error exists whereby if you try to jump over the crown he throws at you, you die in the air due to a misplaced hitbox. Instead, it is more advantageous for players to stay completely still and let the crown pass through them before landing a blow on the King of the Kremlins. Amazing! Other issues in the game include the possibility of the title freezing up during the final world, which is hilarious considering it's ice themed. Cool party! The whole thing feels very janky and slow, not matching the smoothness of the Super Nintendo classics. In fact, an element I'm yet to touch on is this game's music, so let's listen to some of it now. As you just heard, the docks area features the very Genesis rendition of the bonus area music found in the official version of Super Mario All-Stars. The mill stage features a track reminiscent of the water stage of Super Mario Bros. 1, with the game's other music sources being less obvious. 
One thing is for sure though, the game doesn't contain any renditions of classic Donkey Kong Country music, which is a bit of a shame really. Those with good ears for sounds have noted that the final world's music is an edited version of the music that can be found in the fellow dubious game, Sonic Jam 6, more illegal insanity that deserves looking at down the line. The music these games share has led to many to speculate that Super Donkey Kong 99 was created by GameTech, a Taiwanese company responsible for many bootlegs. To add more substance to this theory, Super Donkey Kong 99 also features an identical ROM header to that of Squirrel King, another game from GameTech further supporting this line of thinking. But then again, I have learned when researching games I covered previously that bootleggers from different development houses were known to share assets, source codes and staff, so that could explain these similarities. While I mentioned that Donkey Kong is the only Kong playable in this game, it is also of note that Cranky Kong appears on this game's crude continue screen. Players also get to meet one more Kong if they successfully beat this game, so let's look at what happens when King K. Rule is defeated. Yes, yeah, so that's right, Donkey Kong reunites with Diddy Kong and the pair stand emotionlessly in an empty black void. Absolutely riveting. Seriously though, what a hilariously bad completion bonus and so absolutely fitting for an illegal bootleg like this. It is almost like the soulless black void punishes gamers who have made it to the end for having the audacity to play through this unlicensed absurdity in the first place. Like, forgive me father Miyamoto for I have sinned, now I will repent in the eternal black void of nothingness forever. So if you enjoyed this as mentioned earlier, your subscriptions are really helping this channel grow. So subscribe if you haven't already. Then if you want more Donkey Kong, check out my video on the illegal Donkey Kong Country 4 for the NES. Thanks, bye.